Hey everyone, eight months ago I did a video on Indian textile sector where I focused on Indian textile exporter in the apparel sector. I discussed the key trend in the sector and top companies including Google Das Export, KPR Mill, SP Apparel and Himbat Singh Kasi Day. Among them I mentioned my preferred pick as Google Das Export. In fact, I did a separate video on Google Das in May month. Since then, the stock price has more than doubled. Now in today's video, I want to discuss the fundamentals of another Indian textile player that is a leader in home textile sector, particularly in bed linen. Company name is Indo Count Industries. Company is currently trading at an attractive valuation with PE of around 18. So in this video, I will discuss the business model of the company, leadership detail and seven key factors that would drive company's growth for the future. In fact, I have also done a peer comparison with other leading exporter in the home textile segment. Finally, I've discussed the key risk in company's growth thesis. But before we begin, a disclaimer that this video is only for educational purpose. Please do your own research before investing your money. All right, let's get started. Established in 1988, Indocount is world's largest bed linen player that mainly include four categories. Bed sheets that include flat sheets, fitted sheets, pillow sheets, then fashion bedding. So fashion bedding essentially include all matching items including sheets, comforters, duvet cover, quilt, pillows, etc. By the way, this is a fast moving segment of the company. Then third is utility bedding where company has a proprietary technology to manufacture bedding with properties like anti-static, antimicrobial, waterproof and so on. And for this institutional bedding where it manufactures bedding for top hotel chains, resorts and other institutions. If you look at the major market of Indocount, it is an exporter of bed linen with export to more than 50 countries. With US as the largest market contributing around 70 to 75 percent of revenue, where company commands around 20 percent of market share in US bed sheets. In overseas market, they have a strong presence in Europe, Australia, and so on. And overall, around 97 percent of company's revenue is from export, and about 3 percent is from Indian market. Interestingly, now that Indian market is also evolving with rise of affluent people, Indocount is also focusing on Indian market. Company has launched multiple D2C brand that is direct to consumer via e-commerce platform that include layers that cater to mass segment, boutique living caters to mid and high segment and boutique living luxury caters to top and luxury segment. Company is also expanding its network in India via multi-brand outlets as well as large format store like Shopperstop. Company has around four manufacturing facility with around 153 million meter per annum capacity in the textile processing unit. Now the textile sector in general is very capital intensive that it has got lower single digit margin and has lower return on capital employed and lower asset turnover. However, Indocount has managed to become more efficient with its asset light business model where it outsources the commodity yarn to vendors and focuses on high margin value added business. As a result, Indocount has become highly profitable with very high cash flow. So if you look at company's financials, its revenue jumped significantly during 2012 to 16. But then the growth stagnated for the next few years. This degrowth was due to inventory destocking and rising input cost, which is also a key risk for the company. We'll look at it separately. However, the growth again picked up in the last few years. This is due to company's consistent effort in capacity addition, introduction of premium bedding material, D2C initiatives, digital sales, and business from domestic market. Company's margins also improved significantly during 12 to 16, but then margins fell down to single digit. As a result, company's operating profit that zoomed exponentially also fell down. However, the margins have again improved and operating profits have jumped significantly. And company's net profit has zoomed nearly seven times in the last five years. Company has been generating high cash from operation, especially in 2023, it generated 767 crore in cash. This huge cash generation helped company consistently invest in better opportunity to stay ahead of the curve. In 2023, company's working capital has also improved and cash conversion cycle has also improved. Its latest ROE is 16%, ROC is 15% and has got debt to equity at 0.44 which is a comfortable position. Now if you look at company's leadership, Mr. Anil Kumar Jain is the executive chairman of the company. He has around 45 years of experience in the industry where he started his career in 1975 under the family business and then in 1988 he realized the potential in quality bed textile and promoted Indocount. His son Mr. Mohit Jain is the executive vice chairman of the company. He graduated from Babson College US and has more than 20 years of experience. Then Mr. Kailash Lalpuria is the executive director and CEO of the company. He has more than 40 years of experience. Overall company has a highly experienced team of senior leadership. Now let us look at the key factors that can drive company's growth. 
So first factor is recovery in US market. Since US is the largest market for Indocom with nearly 70 to 75% contribution, it's important to understand the dynamics of US market. If you look at cotton product import data of US for 2023, it was second lowest import in last 20 years. There were two factors that resulted in this slump. So first is inventory destocking. US retailers were sitting on high inventory, hence they did not import much in 2023. And second factor was retailers were very cautious of potential recession in the US. However, the last 12 months of sale in the US market were surprisingly very high. There was decent consumer spending on discretionary item, unemployment level was low, and there was a good wage growth. As a result, US retailers are sitting on very low inventory, and that set a strong base for high import in 2024. So th this is the first biggest growth driver for the company. Second driver is China plus one. While China remains the largest cotton producer in the world, US import data suggests that China's contribution in import is consistently falling. There is clear trend where US retailers are trying to reduce dependence on China and India is going to be a major beneficiary of this trend. Then third factor is expansion beyond US market. So Indocom management has mentioned that the intent to increase contribution from non-US market including Europe, Australia, Middle East and in the long term company intend to reduce US contribution from 70% to 60%. While US market would continue to grow, this reduction in contribution from US would be driven by expansion in other countries. In fact, even Indian market is looking promising with rise of affluent Indians where company has launched a few D2C brands and expanding its pan India presence. Fourth factor is focus on digital platform. Companies leveraging digital platform across US, Europe, Middle East and India to grow its business. In fact, digital platform sales that stood at just 1% in FR20 is now at 10% in FR23. Then fifth factor is enough capacity to meet 2x demand. So currently Indocom capacity is 153 million meter per annum and its volume is 74.7 million meter per annum. Utilization rate is around 49%. It basically means company can handle revenue growth of two times with existing capacity without doing any capex. Assuming 85 to 90% capacity utilization which is expected to increase in the coming year. Beyond that if required company has 46 acre of land parcel available in billard facility that can additionally accommodate around 45 million meter per annum capacity. The best part is company has strong cash flows that help the company optimize the business process and invest in capex from internal accrual without raising capital from the market. In fact, recently company has planned to invest around 50 crore in solar power that would further reduce its cost. It also helped company improve its ESG score. Moreover, company has done some investment with Accenture to improve its IT processes. So far, we discussed the demand side factors that are looking very favorable for Indocom. Now, another important factor for the company is stable cotton prices. So after touching a high in 2022, cotton prices have corrected significantly and have stabilized. Now, going forward, management expected the cotton price to remain stable. So that should help the company on margin side. Then seventh factor is focus on fashion bedding. If you look at company's business, it's divided into bed sheets, fashion bedding, utility bedding and institutional bedding. While bed sheets are more of commodity, the other segments are service oriented and has more value added feature. Obviously it has more margin. And that's where company is focusing on fashion bedding where contribution is expected to increase from current level of 19-20% to 30%. It would help into account not only sustain its margin, but improve them in the near future. So company's management in the latest con call mentioned that as a company we have recently established and invested around 60 crore in a fashion bedding unit which is world class and we have shown this unit to our top customer and they are showing a lot of confidence to see that they should reduce their overall sourcing out of China and shift some of the categories to India. So that is a positive sign and that is where we are looking at much more value addition going forward in these three particular categories. So these are the key factors that would help company in its growth. If you look at numbers, for both short term and medium term, in 2023, company sales volume was 74.7 million meter and management guided for sales volume of 90 to 100 million meter in FR24 and that's around 20 to 30% growth in volume. Out of this, company has achieved sales volume of 68.2 million meter in 9 months of FR24. Although it is still short of its target by 32% if we consider 90 million guidance on lower side. But management has highlighted that Q4 is going to be a good quarter and they have stick with their initial guidance. So that gives a good clarity on expectation for Q4 results. As far as medium term prospects are concerned, company is confident to achieve 90 to 92% peak operational capacity and double its top line in the next 3 to 4 years. 
Moreover, cotton prices are expected to remain stable and hence the margin guidance is at around 15%. Now if you look at valuation, Indocount is currently trading at a PE of around 18-19. Now there are multiple factors that makes Indocount a good candidate for PE re-rating. For instance, premiumization is a key trend in home textile as well where people are shifting from normal bedsheet to fashion bedsheets and that has more margin. So company's margin profile should improve. Moreover, there is a clear focus on China plus one and India is one of the strongest candidate. Considering the leadership of Indocount in bed linen space, its strong financial profile, consistent upgradation of product, I think Indocount should command a better valuation with a P of around 25. And that's where I feel the current valuations are lower than its fair value and gives a good margin of safety. So personally, I have added it in my portfolio. In case you want to know the details, I've recently shared my portfolio detail in my weekly video series where I share one exclusive video every week that include in-depth analysis of Indian stock market and potential opportunities in various sectors. You can get the details on my website. I provided the link in the pinned comment. If you look at company's competitor, its top pair include Trident, Wellspun Living and Himmat Singha Cide. So this is the financial comparison between Indocount, Trident, Wellspun Living and Himmat Singha Cide. Currently Indocount is trading at 325 rupee. It has actually jumped around 6-7% today. Trident is at 44, Wellspun is 164 and this company is at 150. In terms of market cap, Indocount is at 6400 crore, Trident 22,000, Wellspun 16,000, Himmat Singha at 1500. Trailing 12 month revenue, if you look at it, Indocount is 3200 crore, Trident is 6700, Wellspun is 9000, and Himachika is 2800. Trailing 12 month profit for Indocount is 341 crore, Trident 421, Wellspun is 671, and Himachika is 111. Trailing 12 month revenue growth of Indocount is 12%, Trident is 1%, Wellspun is 13, and Himachika is 3%. Operating margin is 17% uh, for Indocount, Trident 15%, Wellspun 14% and Himan is 20%. Return on equity at 16%, Trident 11%, Wellspun 4.7% and this is minus. ROCE of Indocount is 15%, Trident 12%, Wellspun 6% and this is at 3.7%. So profitability wise, Indocount is one of the best and even if you look at the valuation, PE of Indocount is 18.9, which is much better than Trident at 53, Wellspun is at 24, Himachika is 13, EV to EBITDA is at 12.4, Trident at 22.6, Wellspun 12.7 and Himachika at 7, Price to Sale is 1.96, Trident 3.3, Wellspun 1.7 and Himachika at 0.5. So all in all, I think valuation wise also, Indocount is looking very promising as compared to the other players and uh, growth also is pretty good as compared to other players profitability is also good and uh, valuation also if you look at it it's a small cap company as compared to trident and wellspun uh, where they have a higher market cap now let us look at the key risk for the company so first key risk is cotton price fluctuation indocount is predominantly a cotton textile producer and hence its margins are dependent upon cotton prices so the raw material consists of around 50 percent of company's total expense Hence, any volatility in cotton prices directly impact the profitability of the company. If you recall, we discussed how company's margins struggled during FI 18 to 20 period. And the major reason was high raw material cost and inventory restocking. But the good news is that after a sharp jump in cotton price between 2020 to 22, cotton prices have fallen significantly and have stabilized now and expected to uh, not jump significantly in the near term. So at least for the next few years, cotton price should not pose a major risk for the textile company. In fact, the fall in cotton price should be a strong growth driver for textile sector. However, you need to keep an eye on cotton prices because when cotton price goes up, it directly impacts the profitability of cotton textile company and impact the share price. Second key risk is slowdown in demand. Since around 95% sale of the company is from export with around 70-75% from US, company is exposed to risk of slowdown in demand due to factors like inflation that impact discretionary spending. This inflation has already impacted the sale of all Indian textile player with focus in US and Europe including the Indocount company. For instance, company sales grew around 21% in FR21 but fell down to 12.8% then 6% in FR23. The good news is, now that US market is expected to recover in FR24 with fall in interest rate, the demand for textile is going to increase. But please remember that volatility in demand due to factors like inflation is one of the key risks for the company. Then third key risk is Red Sea crisis. Of late, there are shipping challenges due to geopolitical tension over Red Sea that may impact logistic cost or delay the shipments and that can impact company's revenue and margin. 
So in this video, we discuss the fundamentals of Indocount, that is the world's largest bed linen player with current market cap of around 6,100 crore and a P ratio of around 18. Company is fundamentally strong with strong presence in US market. We discuss seven key factors that would drive the growth of Indocount in the future that include recovery in US market with retailers restocking the inventory, China plus one trend, expansion beyond US market including Indian market, focus on digital platform, then company has enough capacity to meet 2x demand without any incremental capex and stable cotton price with margin expansion via focus on fashion bedding. Considering all the factors, I think that Indocount is looking very attractive at current levels. There's a good upside potential for the share to grow at least two times in the next one to two years. We also looked at the peer comparison and finally the key risk that you must keep in mind before investing your money. Now tell me in the comments, which is your preferred company in textile segment? If you find this video useful, do share it with your friends. I'll see you next video. Till then, take care.